All right, welcome back everyone. Um, today we're going to go over the cartilaginous joints in a little bit more detail. Cartilaginous joints are joints where you have adjacent bones that are connected by cartilage. They lack a joint cavity. They can be joined by either hyaline cartilage or fibrocartilage, and that basically uh, denotes which of the type of cartilaginous joints we have. So the first is a synchondrosis which is the cartilaginous joint where the bones are joined by hyaline cartilage and um, places where bones are connected to a cartilaginous structure are also called synchondrosis. So you either have two bones connected to hyaline cartilage or you have a single bone connected to hyaline cart cartilage. Both of those are the synchondroses. Places where it's just a bone connected to the cartilaginous structure is the ribs. We'll see that in, in just a second. And the second type of cartilaginous joint is a symphysis or symphysis, where the bones are joined by fibrocartilage. So let's talk about each of those. Okay, synchondroses. Um, like I said, they're either two bones that are joined by hyaline cartilage or a bone that is connected to hyaline cartilage itself. They uh, may be temporary or permanent. Um, growth plates of long bones are temporary synchondroses. So um, you'll find them where you see the epiphyseal plate, which is the growth plate of a long bone, um, it, um, that's, that's one of the, uh, temporary, uh, synchondroses. What you'll see is that the epiphyseal plate, which is the region of the growing hyaline cartilage, unites with the diaph, the diaphyses, which is the shaft of the bone. Um, bone lengthening happens because the growth of the growth plate or the cartilage itself is eventually replaced by bones, by bone, which adds to the diaphyses. So for many years during childhood growth, the rates of cartilage growth and bone formation are going to be equal. And thus the epiphyseal plate does not change in overall thickness as the bone lengthens. But once you get to your late teens and early twenties, when you stop growing, the growth of the cartilage slows and eventually stops. And that mean, then you'll have the epiphyseal plate completely replaced by bones, uh, by bone, and then the diaphysis and the epiphysis portions of the bones fuse together to form the single adult bone. That fusion of the diaphysis and the epiphysis is called a synostis, synostosis, and that, that just means the production of bone. Um, you'll find permanent synchondroses. Uh, in the ribs, found uh, mainly at the first sternocostal joint where the first rib is anchored to the manubrium by its costal cartilage. And I'll show a picture of that in a second. Because the bone and the cartilage uh, don't move, both um, temporary and permanent synchondroses are functionally classified as a synarthrosis, meaning no movement. So here's an example of the epiphysis and the diaphysis, the shaft of the bone, and the growth plate. This is a temporary synchondrosis. And then here's a permanent synchondrosis where you see the ribs connected to the cartilage. And this never gets replaced by bone, and so that means it's permanent. Okay, and the next example are things called symphysis, uh, which is a cartilaginous joint where the bones are joined by fibrocartilage. Symphysis means growing together. Um, Fibrocartilage is much stronger than hyaline cartilage because it contains numerous bundles of thick collagen fibers. It just means that that fibrocartilage is going to be uh, able to resist stress a lot better than a uh, hyaline cartilage would. That gives the symphyses the ability to strongly unite the adjacent bones, but still allow for some movement to occur. And when we have joints that allow for some limited movement, we call those amphiarthroses. Um, the gap that separates the bones at a symphysis could be narrow, like in the pubic symphysis, or wide, like in the intervertebral symphyses. And I'll, I'll show you pictures of both of those. So here's the pubic symphysis. This, remember, this is going to be permanent, and uh, it's a narrow gap between the two bones uh, in the pubic area. And then here is the uh, intervertebral symphysis, which 
are uh, basically uh, the gaps in between your two vertebral bodies and in, in, well, multiple vertebral bodies in your spine. And so this doesn't allow for a lot of movement, but it does allow for some movement. And what I said before is that when you think about something like this in your spine, as it sums up the entire spine, you get some movement that's able, you know, you can adjust and move and bend your spine, but it doesn't get full free range of movement like something like a ball and socket joint would. Okay, and so with that, uh, look forward to the next video coming up very soon.